Hey guys, welcome back to As A Man Thinketh on Yanasa TV. I wanted to talk a little bit about Vermont today because Vermont is a place that I have always held close to my heart. Um, I love the state of Vermont. Could never raise my kids there because of, um, well, I'm sure you know why. But I grew up with a family farm in Vermont and I absolutely loved that farm. Uh, I was going to try and buy it before I bought my farm here in North Carolina and married my best friend. It is such an incredibly beautiful state. And every year I take my kids up to Maine and I still drive by that farm in Vermont. I have a lot of memories in Vermont going to agricultural fairs. I mean, it is, it, it, there is no question that Vermont is a beautiful state. I found it a bit disturbing when I read the news this morning and learned that the Biden administration's EPA has sent a letter to the state of Vermont demanding that they take regulatory authority away from the state's Department of Agriculture. Real quick reminder, guys, Yanasa TV is sponsored by Yanasa Trading Co. Yanasa Trading Co. is a trading company that my wife and I have been working on building for the past year to help offset some of the effects of ad censorship on our channel. We have a lot of Defend the Right to Farm gear, the Defend the Right to Farm gear t-shirts, Defend the Right to Farm Ranch, all of that helps support not only this channel, but also our nonprofit. We are currently running a pre-sale on leather patch hats with the Defend the Right to Farm logo on them. You can get those, pre-order them now, because a lot of times we have to place that order for these hats, and when we get them in, we don't have a lot of extras. So be sure to pre-order your Defend the Right to Farm leather patch hat. So shop at UNOS Trading Co. and support the channel. According to Vermont, Vermont Digger, the Federal Environmental Protection Agency, is requiring Vermont to change the way it regulates some types of farms after an investigation showed that the state program was not complying with the Clean Water Act. The Clean Water Act, passed in 1972, apparently gives the Environmental Protection Agency, a bureaucracy of the United States, the authority to come in and take away the rights of a state to govern its waters if it feels that the state is failing to do so. The EPA is going after Vermont's uh, concentrated animal feeding operations, which are CAFOs. You guys know how I feel about CAFOs. They said that currently there are two agencies which split re responsibility for regulating the farms. The Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets, and the Agency of Natural Resources. But that system is, is causing problems because farmers aren't sure where to go or what, what regulations they're supposed to follow etc cetera, etc cetera. i think number one just thinking about this uh, off the top of my head you have two very different agencies with two very different purposes and when it comes to the state of vermont the agency of agriculture so what they're actually responsible for is to go in and handle pollution and runoff coming from fields the department of environmental conservation on the other hand handles you know, the runoff that's coming from certain barns, certain manure pits, etc. So if there is a failed policy, in my perspective, of, you know, the Clean Water Act, the agency that has been in the past responsible for handling CAFOs, which would be these barns, manure pits, etc., that's, that's, that's kind of where a lot of this is going, that agency is the one that has failed. But yet the Biden administration's Environmental Protection Agency feels that they should hand all the control over to that agency. You know, in the U.S. we have a lot, <laughs> a lot of agencies. All of these agencies are run by bureaucrats, by, by educated professionals who have very little on-field experience. And they, they, they basically go out as specialists and tell us how to live our lives depending on what the agency covers. Each state also has agencies, and depending on the state, you may elect some of the people who head up some of those agencies, um, or you may not, depending on how it's structured. But because you know each state has agencies and the federal government has agencies, it, it tends to diversify the power of the agencies. It requires agencies to come together and come up with constructive plans that are not just good for one agency, but good for both agencies. And what I'm hearing here is that the Environmental Protection Agency, under the pressure of certain environmental groups in, in the state of Vermont, wants to take away all the power from 
an agency that protects farmers. There's no doubt in my mind that we have to protect our waterways, that we need to have clean water. And I think that every farmer feels that way. I haven't walked onto, I've, I've driven across this country, I haven't walked onto any farmer's land that says, oh, we don't care about our water. In fact, it's usually the opposite. They're looking for all sorts of ways that they can protect their waterways. Um, and, and, and from reading through some of these articles, the um, Agency of Agriculture in the state of Vermont said, hey, look, you know, a lot of the data sets they're going off of in this particular situation, our old is is old, and and while the two agencies have been you know head to head in the past, over the past eight years they've made strides to get along, and they've in in the state of Vermont has made huge progress when it comes to clean water and and cleaning up their water. But I mean, not everything can happen overnight. And as you know, over the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of floods in the state of Vermont, which have been blamed on climate change. Although I have to admit. You know, when I was a kid, my, my grandparents ran the Cavendish Historical Society. There's a little bench out in front with their name on it. Um, it's Stone Bench, I believe it's, it's part of their memorial. Anyway, when I was a kid, I remember going into the Cavendish Historical Society. We used to run around, you know, outside and collect bottles and cans that had been, you know, left littered, whatever it was. We'd collect them all up and we'd take them to the old Cavendish general store. I don't even think it's there anymore. Um, Proctorsville has grown quite a bit since I've been there, but I feel like Cavendish is, is still pretty small. But we used to collect all these cans and bottles, take them to the store, and we'd get our five cents a can or, you know, five cents a bottle, whatever it was. And that's how we would we would make money. We'd make money by cleaning up the environment. It was a fantastic program. But I remember, you know, during those times we had to hang out there and my grandmother was working in this historical society, going in and seeing a lot of black and white photos of a historic flood that had hit the town. And it turns out that that wasn't the only historic flood that had impacted parts of Vermont. But then we went for decades, decades after the Industrial Revolution without seeing any of these massive floods, but they have happened in the past. And if there's one thing I can guarantee you, it will happen again here in North Carolina along the deep river. There was once a historic flood that hit everything. It, it, it almost peaked the top of what we call the, the Carbonton Dam. It was a huge flood and it happened, oh, I don't know, maybe 80 years ago now, hundred years ago. Guess what? It happened again in 2016. My wife and I did a video on it because one of our friends who had a farm down on the river, the, the, the people who um, had, had appraised it had put the property uh, house in the wrong location and they got flooded up to the roof. It didn't have uh, flood insurance because of this appraiser. So we did a video on it. But the point is, is that if a flood has happened once before, it can happen again. And because it's happened in the past, and it's happened frequently in the past, just because it didn't happen for several decades doesn't mean because it's happening now is because of climate change. Just wanted to throw that little tidbit out there because I feel like when I do visit Vermont and I hear about the floods, I drove through Cavendish during their horrible flood about a year ago, um, people have forgotten the history of the area. But back to the point, because of these floods, these historic floods that have happened again over the last couple of years in Vermont, um, you've had a lot of runoff running into Lake Chaplin. And so with all of this runoff coming all the way down the mountains, the Green Mountains into Lake Chaplin, you've had you know, a lot of pollution that happens with floods. It happens everywhere with floods. Even in the recent rains here in North Carolina, they had to shut down lakes, lakes where they get their drinking water because of the amount of pollution from all the runoff coming from people's yards, just about everywhere. But it's just easy to blame it on the farmers. So they take these statistics, they say, look, we're still getting pollution. This system isn't working. We need to take the power away from the Agency of Agriculture, which is the agency that's protecting these polluters, and we need to give all that power to the Conservation Agency, which is essentially a sub-agency of the Environmental Protection Agency. So the EPA comes in and says, give us more power. Yes, 
Who would have ever thought that we would see such a massive power grab in the state of Vermont? Well, we've seen it in Oregon, so it shouldn't surprise you. And in actuality, the state of Idaho has been threatened with a similar response from the EPA in recent years. If you don't manage your water and cut off your farmers so we have more water for data centers, we're gonna come in and we're gonna take control of who handles your water rights. Sound familiar? I will say that in 2020, the Vortstefeld farm, which is right on Lake Chaplin, um, was found um, to have been causing pollution into the lake. And you could actually see this from a photograph. And I've always said, you know, there's always a bad actor. You know, there's, and it, sometimes it feels like recently, it only takes one bad, bad actor to shut down agriculture. You've seen that in the state of Oregon. There was one dairy farm that was a bad actor. They shut it down. They, I think the land has now been turned over into conservation land or whatever because several dairy farms have tried to start up there again and they just kept shutting them down. Um, but if we were to look at everything and say, hey, every time there's a bad actor, we're gonna shut it down, we wouldn't have the government of the United States of America at all. There are a lot more bad actors in the United States government, especially these bureaucracy agencies, than there are farmers. So the big complaint here about the uh, Agency of Agriculture in the state of Vermont is people are like, well, you know, this agency is supporting farmers and yet it's supposed to regulate the farmers. So there's this conflict of interest. But the, the issue is that you're taking away the regulatory authority, the regulatory input of the people who actually work with the farmers. You know, I, somebody once said, our farmers are our best resource, our, our, our best heroes when it comes to mitigating uh, the environment, when it comes to making changes to help heal our environment because they know the land, they've worked the land, they know how these systems operate, they have hands on the ground. They're the best mitigators. All we have to do is incentivize them to make certain changes and you're, you're gonna have the largest amount of impact. Those are pretty smart people that have said those things. When you give those changes and when you give those regulations completely over to a natural resources and conservation agency that has absolutely very, very little hands-on experience on these farms. These are people who have been educated. And, and as, we, as we know, a lot of education today tends to stick people into boxes, right? You know, I was listening to somebody talk the other day about doctors and you become, you become a specialist in teeth, you become a specialist in eye, you become a specialist in noses, you become a specialist in ears, but you're not qualified to look at the entire human body and, and know, you know, what ailments they may have because you've been specialized. And when we look at, you know, a lot of these agencies, a lot of the people working in these agencies, it's, it's all specialized. So they don't necessarily have that other expertise. These farmers are well-rounded individuals when it comes to understanding land management, when it comes to understanding animals, when it comes to understanding how to make it profitable and work. Things have to be profitable and they have to work. And, and if you take all of that away, when you, when you look at you know, the entire US, for example, if you, if you completely shut down farming and agriculture, the, f the first thing that would happen, it would happen overnight, would that you'd start to see a lot of this land being bought up by people, houses being developed. You'd see about 10 times the amount of pollution in about 10 years, but they don't think that way. They don't care about it. All they care about is, well, hey, look, we see this coming into the, the rivers and streams. It doesn't matter how many of that you know, washed off in the floodwaters. They're the problem, we wanna shut them down and we can't shut them down as long as they have an agency that's protecting them and that's trying to figure out ways of meeting the needs of environmental quality and, and water quality while also meeting the needs of farmers. We can't have somebody that looks at things from both sides, both perspectives. We need an unbalanced approach and we need to give more authority to the agency that has failed completely in its task in regulating these things in the state of Vermont. So basically at this point in time, according to the letter from the EPA, Vermont has one choice really, consolidate, and move all of the regulatory authority over to the Natural Resources Commission of the state. Or the federal government themselves, the Environmental Protection Agency, will come in and take over enforcement. The federal government 
will take enforcement. So it's kind of strong arming the state of Vermont, taking away the state's rights by saying, hey, look, you know, because your voters, because your people can't manage themselves, you're either going to give it all over to our friends or we're going to come in and just simply take it from you because we have the right to do that because we're the Environmental Protection Agency. This type of stuff is happening not just on the West Coast, not just on the East Coast, not just in middle, middle America, it's happening across the entire country. These agencies are quickly coming in and taking as much control as they possibly can with whatever excuse they can possibly find. It doesn't matter that the state of New York borders the entire other side of the lake and that some pollution is probably coming from the state of New York. What matters to them is that they have an opportunity here. They just had massive floods running through Vermont. They can say that the pollution has increased. Doesn't matter whether or not they've had eight years of progress, eight years of agency intercooperations. What matters to them is that now they have an excuse. They have an excuse and they've sent a letter. They've made a demand in that letter. You follow that demand or you lose all control. I think that this is a very bad thing for farmers in the state of Vermont. I think if you like Ben and Jerry's ice cream, this is a very bad thing. If you like cheese from Vermont, Vermont cheddar, this is a very bad thing. What we're seeing in Vermont is the very start of the next state of Oregon. And I can guarantee you that if this goes through, the things that I love about Vermont, the things that I've always experienced in my childhood growing up in Vermont, seeing these farms, visiting these farms, participating in agricultural fairs with these farms, none of that will exist in about 20 years. Of course, some would say that's the point. Anyway, guys, stay tuned. I've got more videos on the way. I wanna talk a little bit about what's happening in the state of Maryland. Maryland farmers have been under threat from these massive power lines, transmission lines that are going in everywhere for data centers and, and I think it's Fredericksburg or Fredrickson. In any case, I'll get that video out in the next couple of days. I also wanted to talk about a Vermont farmer who is in this area, this area of contention between the EPA and the state of Vermont who had all of his hay bales cut open. I'm hoping that I can get an interview with him. Enjoy your day and I'll get some more videos out to you shortly.